Welcome to the Rich Dad Stockcast with Andy Tanner. And this show is possibly my favorite. Um, we're back. We, I think about a year ago, we did, I don't know, 30 shows or something. But this one is, you know, Robert, every time he does a show, he's like, this is the most important show. But I'm, <laughs> I'm actually going to say the same thing because this is this show, the title kind of says it all. It's how to buy your first cash flowing stock. And I don't know what's more important because I think most people, myself included, I just got stuck on doing it the first time. The first time was scary. The second time, no big deal. But that first time, man, I had all sorts of fear come out. I didn't know what I was doing. I'm a too stupid to do it. So I think learning to buy your first one is most important. It was to me, and and I think it will be to most of the community. Um, wow. You want to try something new on this show? So, so bear with me, but what we want to try to do is while you're watching the show, if you can write comments and questions in it, then maybe what we're thinking about doing is a, a second show where we kind of answer those questions and, and really try to be interactive with, with the audience. So let's see if that works. It could totally fall on its butt. I don't, I don't know, but it'd be fun to hear from you. It'd be fun to know what you need to know. Um, So while we're doing that, go ahead and hit subscribe, hit that uh, bell to get notifications when the show comes up. And I'm going to start, I'm going to tell you three things we're going to promise that you're going to learn. And then we're going to introduce our wealth expert, Andy Tanner. I always wanted to try that. (laughs) All right. We're going to, we're going to make sure you learn three things. You're going to learn what a cash flowing stock is. This is something that I didn't know until Andy taught me. We're going to teach you how to get paid to invest. So I want you to hear that part again. You're going to get paid to invest. And then this is probably Andy's favorite because Andy is all about no risk or sorry, Andy, risk mitigation. You're going to learn without any risk. Andy, I said no risk. So deal with that one. All right, Andy Tanner, come on over. Let's let's hear what you got to say. Um, I Like I said, I'm really excited because to me, this could be the most important show we ever do because it's it's helping people get that first foot forward. Every show is the most important show, man. <laughs> it always is. And that's actually that, true. Yeah. Whatever you're doing in the present moment right now is more important than anything else you're doing. You know, you're focused on the task at hand. That's fair. But this is a really exciting thing. And I'll, I'll tell you uh, actually how this, this idea, this topic, I guess, came about was from my kids. Um, one of the strange things that happened, my, my older son, when he finished the eighth grade, he was kind of a late bloomer. And, you know, like his dad, he loves to play basketball and he wasn't as tall as I think he was going to get. And so we said, Hey, why don't we pull you out of school for a year, let you grow. And then we'll put you back in the state that I live in uh, here in the U S lets you do that. And so uh, we pulled him out and we said, let's do homeschool for a year. And so we chose four topics. We chose stocks and options investing. We chose real estate investing. We chose taxes education. You know, Tom helped us. And then uh, we chose business. And then on Friday, we did, you know, massive amounts of PE and physical education. So those were the five areas of study. And we did this. And it was an amazing experience because, first of all, imagine that time one-on-one with your son or your daughter. Be incredible. Uh, absolutely. Just, I mean, incredibly priceless. No other students, no other nothing. Just he and I talking together. And the learn, he, he went so much faster than I thought. So it was in uh, September, in the fall. And it was time to buy uh, his first stock. And it was interesting because of the care that we took and the, the education. That it, it wasn't willy-nilly. We just said, okay, let's go buy a stock. Uh, we really cared about how we were going to do it. We talked a lot about what stock ownership was. It was an amazing lesson for that asset class as we prepared, you know, after the first couple of weeks, uh, we put a couple of weeks into it and then we uh, went out and bought the first stock. So it, it uh, and then my, now my son, you know, three years later, now he's bigger than I am. He just passed <laughs> me little sucker. As soon as he got tall, I, I played at six, eight. I think I've lost a little bit with age, but he's uh, wait six he's eight. me now. Yeah, he's six eight, and, and you know the first thing when he mom made us go back to back, I said, "All right, we're arm wrestling." So I can still win the arm wrestle. So I still <laughs> well, got that. But <laughs> that's, you believe hey, that's that? Important. No, I. But yeah, but hey. but it's fun. So so, but but the first thing I think the first thing we said we we're going to talk about is what a cash flow stock is, and uh, 
what's important is the mentality of when we go into this. For example, uh, and, I, and I said this on our last episode, and I'll probably say it on every episode, is the problem with CNBC and, you know, I love Jim Cramer and, and you know, all this stuff. But the problem is, is everyone is totally fixated on the least important part of the investment, which is the price. Uh, it, it is the least important uh, of them all. Think of it this. If you had a golden goose that laid golden eggs, who cares what the price is? Eventually, the thing will pay for itself. You know, I mean, uh, it's going to give you golden eggs on a regular basis, and it's only a matter of time. So your concern would not be price. Your concern would be two words, rate of return, which in plain English, rate means it's like the speed limit. It's, it's how fast something happens. And return means I get my money back. So if the golden goose was $1,000 and, and you know, each egg was you know, worth you know, 500, they're small eggs, I guess, <laughs> uh, then great, you get, you get it back in two. You know, two, two egg lengths, you'd have it back. Let's say the golden goose was $10,000. Well, now you could figure out how long it would take for you to get your money back with it laying eggs. So it, it really doesn't matter what the price is because eventually you're going to get your money back. What you have to worry about is does the goose lay eggs? Is That's it a good great. goose? Is it a healthy goose? And we call that fundamental analysis. We check the, the goose out. Goose. We make, yeah, we make sure it's an egg layer. Yeah, that's <laughs> and, the same, and the same is true with real estate. I mean, if I'm going to buy real estate, I, I say, look, what are the rents? And, and if I put this money in, how long before uh, I get my money back? How long do I get that? I'm not worried about flip. I would never buy a goose saying, let's see if the price of gooses, golden gooses are going up or golden geese. Uh, or is it going up and I want to get rid of my goose? No, I want that, those golden eggs. So what happens is, is you look at a company, three parts to it. Number one, it's like a, that cash flow jack in the box. I always drop. Before you get into to the real lesson here, I I have a question for you. So yeah. one, I'm totally shamed that your son was doing what I've just started doing. And he's years started, old. So I'm shamed, but I, but I am also encouraged that at 15, like totally possible to do. And I, I hope the audience caught that point. But second, and this is kind of a, a society thing. Did you have to, and I imagine your son had a head start being your son, but did you have to deprogram him about the price? Because no, is that because he was born at your house? Because uh, I think society yeah. only thinks of investing as buy low, sell high. You know, my son, my two boys are not lost on, on how lucky they are. You know, some people say, well, your boys are geniuses. They're doing all that. No, they're not. They're just come hang out at my house, man. They're at, you know, they're, they're about their music and their basketball shoes and you know, all their stuff. They're just normal kids. What's abnormal is just that they've been immersed in financial education since they were born. I mean, they, they've been, you know, I remember we were in Hawaii and Robert and Kim took them out on their yacht. And after we went into a meeting and, you know, rich dad's son in the, in the book, his name is Mike in the book, but that's not his real name. Right. And he was at this meeting and my sons are sitting there probably six and seven years old at the time, you know, listening to rich dads, like the real rich dad's son speak about what rich dad was like from, from, you know, the biological perspective. And so they, they've grown up with the advisors. They've grown up with Tom and Kenny and Garrett and you know, all the advisors. Uh, and we spent about 15 years, at least I did, on that advisor team uh, you know, before they got in high school and it was time to, to put all my energy into them. But right. I will tell you, uh, they didn't have to get deprogrammed at all because they, they totally got it. Um, so they yeah, were just lucky. That is really lucky. That's a big deal because I think most people have to take that first step before but they can. It enter. does. Exactly. That's why we're talking. What we're talking about is the programming is price going up, price going up, price going up. It's insane. If you and I were to turn on CNBC right now, they'd be talking about the market going up or down or prices going up and down. They would yep. so show stock charts of whether the price was high or whether the price was low. Guys on Wall Street that are hired as analysts have to put a price target on there. They say, okay, we've looked at this company and this is where we think their price is going to go. Price, 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 price. And, and I love that golden goose metaphor. That analogy makes sense because it's the, it's, it's the production. So, you know, I mentioned there's three parts to a company. There's the work that it does. We want it to do quality work. We want to be blessing people's lives. We want 
to go to the factory and see what they're building and what they're creating and be tremendously proud of the value that we're, we're serving our fellow man with. I mean, that's what entrepreneurship and capitalism is. It's serving other people at lower prices than the other guy is. And then secondly is once you look at the quality of work that they've done, do they have a model that's profitable? And are they earning money? And in real estate, we call this a distribution. If, if Robert gives someone like Kenny McElroy some money, he's going to expect a, a distribution, that those profits, those earnings is what I like to call it, that those earnings, you know, we call it net operating income, you know, comes in, that a portion of that is distributed to the owners of the property. The same is true with cash flowing stocks as they cash flow, but they divide it up. They take earnings. So those three parts, the price of the stock, the work that it does, and the earnings it produces, for the investor, I don't care nearly as much about the price as I do the quality of work they're doing, how well they're doing it. That means it can be a good, solid, you know, healthy goose to live a long time and produce lots of earnings that are divided. It's, it's semantics. You know, whether you divide the profits up or you distribute the earnings out, that's the same phrase, just using different language. Okay. And so we went out and we looked for a company that paid a real healthy dividend that said, look, we take a, a decent portion of our, of our uh, earnings and we give them to the people that own the company, the shareholders. Can, can I jump in right here? Um, Please. When you were saying the, the three things, honestly, my little, my little voice in my head was like, yeah, you can worry about one and two, you know, uh, what it produces and, and if it's good for, for the world. But man, I can't afford that. I just need the one that's going to make me the most money. So like my little voice just like triggered. So well, I'm glad that you went straight into dividend because that's the money part. Here's my question is, what does it mean to make the most money? You know, you have to really in your mindset say, am I going to make money by buying this golden goose low and then trying to sell it high to someone else and then I'll have no goose and I'll just have cash? Or do I really care about what that goose produces? Um, each and every month. The other thing that's interesting about price is I've got a, a stock, Greg, uh, that I can sell you for, you know, $5. I have one that I can sell you for $200. Which one is best? Well, you don't know because price means nothing. Rate of return is everything. Price doesn't mean anything. It's the rate of return that means everything to an investor. If we go to a compounding calculator, and you can Google compounding calculator, you will find that, that time and rate are your big ones, right? There, you know, you put in, you, you have what you have. There's no control that you have over what you start with. You start with what you start with. The, the time to start is now, that's when you start, right? But how well you do it is a function of your education, your discipline, and your temperament. And that rate of return is the one that you can change the most. You have what you have in your bank account right now. It is what it is. And your age is what it is as well. We don't get to change those two. But your rate that you get this year has a, I think your financial education has a huge impact on that. Your temperament, your discipline has a huge impact on that. So anyway, as we went to buy our first stock, the first thing we did for a couple of weeks is we said, we're going to practice. And that brings in the idea of doing this with no risk. And you know me, I, I never like to use those two words together, no risk. It, it does happen sometimes, you know, there are times where there are no risk in, you know, if, if I have a money back guarantee on something that I can buy, okay, then there's no risk there. Um, and if I'm practicing on the, on the basketball court, there's no risk when I practice my game on the, on the practice court. So we have something called a paper trade account and, uh, you know, I'm nervous. I, I hope we can get this through if we have to go to commercial break, but, but if we can, uh, if we can practice in a virtual account, we can gain these skills. And I'll tell you, I think, I, I think the first time you go solo on a plane, sure, your heart rate might be up a little bit. But if you've been in a simulator and done it successfully in a simulator, you know, a thousand times, you're going to feel much better about that, having landed that plane and done that flight in a simulator uh, before you do the real thing. And the simulator is important because it has no risk. So do you have to have a brokerage account to get the paper, paper trading? It's the best way to do it. Um, most brokerages, I mean, the vast majority of brokerages have a little setting where you just push a button and 
put you in virtual mode. So everything else is identical. It's super accurate. So it's using real, real time stocks and all that. Mm -hmm. That's really cool. Hey, we do got to go to break. So we just covered how to do this risk free, but we still need to cover what a cash flowing stock is. And then kind of the the cool one. Yeah. How to get paid to invest. So when we come back, we're going to cover both of those. And Andy Tanner said he'd take his shirt off. Okay, that part's that's not happening. That's, that's, that's high risk. Right, we'll, we'll see you in a couple seconds. Thanks for coming back to the show. Um, again, hit subscribe, hit notifications, and please put put things in the comments so we can make this show better for you. Um, I'm going to give you a little fact about Rich Dad that most people don't know. The company was not actually called Rich Dad originally. It was called Cashflow Technology. Cashflow Technology. Yep. And the reason I bring that up is cash flow is the most important mind shift and principle that we teach at Rich Dad. And so that's kind of my segue in here to Andy's going to teach you what a cash flowing stock is, which most people don't even understand that stocks can cash flow. So Andy, can you just explain what a cash flowing stock is? And I think yeah. you're going to tell me two different things. Well, first of all, why is a stock, why do we pay what we pay for a stock? And if you study uh, Benjamin Graham, you know, Warren Buffett's mentor, Benjamin Graham, and you look at the formula that they used, the actual mathematical formula they would use to pick investments, there were really two main elements in that. Um, the first one was earnings. Are they earning money? So is cash flowing out of that jack-in-the-box, right? I love that visual of the of the turning the crank and outcomes earnings, right? Because of of what we the work we've done, so earnings was a big deal, and in he and in his mind that is the most important element. And then the the second important element they had is is it growing? What's the growth potential? You know, is this company going to grow in what they do? Are they going to serve more people basically, and have have more things to uh, to offer and serve? So they're going to serve more people, and are they are they making money? Those are the two things. So. When you see a stock like Tesla go through the roof before they've earned a dime, you know, they're still operating in the red. People say, well, they have the potential to do cash flow someday, right? right they say this is right. a good idea. They're in, they're reinvesting a lot of money. They're, they're, they're burning a lot of money in advertising and tech and development. We think it'll be good. So people, the, the problem is stock price already goes up in anticipation of that growth when there's no earnings. So a cash flowing stock for the for your first one, I really like the idea of of starting off with something that is actually pretty established. Now here's a, an important thing, and this really just means a dividend stock. A stock okay. that pays a really nice dividend because not so all of them do. A dividend is not something that the, the stock pays you quarterly, correct? Just yeah, because you the, own it, you're not doing anything. You're just you bought some stock quarterly. They pay you. That's right. And a lot of people poo poo that because they think, well, gee, you know, the golden egg uh, wasn't as much as the golden goose. You know, the golden goose was $20,000 and the golden egg is 500 bucks or whatever. Right. And they poo poo that because they don't realize a couple of things. You know, if you'd have bought Coca Cola for, you know, $5 a share, 20 years down the road, man, your dividend is fat and inflation's helped you. And you have to think about, what that's going to look like in five, 10 years, because those dividends with inflation, you know, they get fat. One, one, one prediction I will make, uh, I don't make many on stock prices. Never. I don't know where Apple, I'm going to, I don't know where Apple's going to go tomorrow in terms of price, but I'll tell you what I do know. I know that the, the federal reserve is in a situation that, that they're dealing with a fiscal policy on the Congress side. That's unsustainable. It's completely unsustainable. I also know that the Democrats and Republicans do not have the political will or ability to fix it. So I know we're going to print more money. And I know over time, my bet is, is that a gallon of gas is going to cost a lot more in 20 years than it costs today. So you uh, we know might have, I, I believe it is strongly. You know, I, I think I, I think that's something I can hang my hat on. So a dividend is going to get higher. In other words, there's going to be more money for the, the stock prices are going to go higher and the dividends are going to go higher simply because of inflation. You know, prices get higher. Well, so do the profits, so do the dividends. Uh, so I'm betting on that. So when I see a, a company, I'm more concerned uh, about how fast I can get my money back out of that. And I use, I'm going to talk about using the options market 
to assist me in that. Because if I can give you a stock that you own free and clear, if I can get that rate of return down to a period of time you like, you'll take whatever dividend it gives you because you have nothing in the investment. If, if you get the golden goose for free, you know who, who cares if it only lays one egg a year or one egg a day? You're, you're getting free eggs here. If, if nice. you have, that's called infant returns. So we started off by saying, let's find some stocks healthy dividend. Now, let me talk about buying your first company. There's a problem that the beginners have is they feel they have to have the best stock in the world and they, they, they won't get it. You know, if you have 15,000 stocks or companies to choose from, uh, that can be paralyzing because you think, well, I've got to find the best one. Look, if you look at Warren Buffett's portfolio right now, you got Apple, you got uh, probably some American Express, Kraft Heinz, uh, Chevron, and probably one other, maybe Moody's or, or whatever it might be. And I will just tell you right now, 80% of his money is in those five or six stocks, 80% of it. None of those stocks are the best stocks out there in terms of price going up. None of them are. None of them. I can find better returns, better everything on all of those. But what Buffett has done is he's bought them intelligently and he's had a temperament where he's stuck with them. And that you get, you know, you have the opportunity to get amazingly wealthy over time with compounding. So I told my sons, I go find a company that you're proud of and something that would be exciting to own. I mean, if if I bequeathed you, you know, in my will, and I said I will give you all my shares of Exxon Mobil, you get that, and you get a phone call from my attorney when I'm dead, and he says, hey, Andy willed all of his Exxon Mobil to you. You get that for the rest of your life. You get that income from those dividends the rest of your life. And here it is. That's incredible news. That's in, <laughs> that's awesome. If a guy pulls up in a Rolls Royce and he gets out and someone says, gee, that guy made a lot of money. And what, what did he do for a living? Oh, he owned, uh, he owned a large portion of the Coca-Cola company. That would not be surprising to anybody. So you find a really fun company. And the way my sons did it is we said, look, we're going to try to earn more money in a in a company than we spend in other words we're going to get more money from it than we give to it so for example i will go and uh, maybe my kids want to buy some you know french fries and some ketchup so they go to the frozen food garbage and they pull out a bag of oritas and they get their their heinz ketchup we're giving money to the heinz craft heinz company but when they pay me a dividend right i'm getting money from the craft heinz company and the game is simply this do I, do I sell more ketchup than I buy? Do I sell more shoes than I buy? Am I positioned in my life as a producer as opposed to a consumer? So that's how we chose uh, our first one is we did what we call a fundamental analysis. We found a, a company we felt was going to be around for a few years, something that paid a decent dividend. And then the most important uh, part of this might be is that we got paid to buy the stock. I even okay. took pictures of this. I, I hate being the yeah, I hate being the guy on the plane that like, hey, look at this picture of my kids. But this is kind of fun. Zach, you can see why we held him out a year. He wasn't a man yet. He's 15 in that uh, my son in the red shirt. And it was in September. And you can see that he had an option that was uh, about 30 days out. So this is basically what he did. He says, look, I promised to buy uh, this company at a certain price. We call it the strike price. And he says, in the next 30 days, if, if this person wants to sell me this stock, I'm willing to buy it. I'm willing to buy it at this price. And they paid him like 150 bucks, I think it is, or whatever, whatever it was, right? So he actually got paid 150 bucks. And for, a, you know, guys my age would have more money and play a bigger game than a 15-year-old kid. But, you know, 150 bucks, that's like, you know, he might go mow somebody's grass for 20 bucks. And that takes him a long time. Here, he clicked a button. <laughs> Boop, and 150 bucks right in his account by clicking a button and so the smile so, on his face is genuine and so we said we got to capture this moment so some people take pictures of their kids first steps and some people take pictures of their kids first date we take pictures of our kids first cash flow stock that they're going to get paid to buy so he didn't even have to buy the stock he got Paid the hundred fifty dollars just being willing to buy the stock, and when he at a discount it, at a lower price, at a discount. Now my uh, son David, he didn't make a hundred; he made less. But here's the thing: 
if you look at his option, it was very, very short. You know, it was just a few days. And so he made that money in like a week or whatever it was. I can't remember. I can't even see the graphic. But, but uh, in both cases, all they simply said is they said to somebody, look, I promise you I will buy this. Now, why would someone do that is the little voice. Why would people do that? Right. Well, obviously, the, the people who own the stock, there's some fear that the stock might go down. They might want, ha they might want to have a price. because Remember I said look, most people are obsessed with price? So some guy's holding the stock. He says, well, I'm really afraid it's going down. I, I sure like a, a guarantee that I could get rid of it. So I'll pay someone to take it off my hands if the price drops. Well, for us, we're like, the price drops. We want to buy it. It's on sale. You know, if you're a consumer, you get excited about Black Friday. If you're an investor, you get excited about Black Swan. You know, Black Friday drops the consumer prices. Black Swan drops the asset prices. So, you know, it's, it's your mindset. Are you a consumer or are you a producer? If you're an investor, you're going to buy companies. And, and I, I don't even like the term stocks. You know, the stock market is a bad place because the stock market is buying and selling and buying and selling of stocks. So it's always going to be about price. But if you talk to guys like Charlie Munger and Warren Buffett, they're talking about business ownership which is no different than real estate ownership because all real estate ownership is, is a business. You get an LLC, you go out and you buy a, you know, a hundred unit apartment building and you're in the business of giving people housing. You're, you're running, you have, you pay taxes, blah, 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 blah. It's, it's, you know, you have an LLC, you have to have a, a business attorney. You're in business. You're providing people with value. All, all the stocks do is they allow you to own businesses of different types, you know, anything from chemical companies to food companies, to energy companies, to financial companies, uh, all kind of, you know, consumer electronic companies. And you get to participate in this incredible prosperity uh, that is, my belief is American business. No matter where you are in the world, you can participate. They'll share the companies with you. So three things I would say, number one, practice on paper first. You know, get some education. That's what, you know, I've spent my life's work doing. It's why we founded the Cashflow Academy, so people can learn, you know, how to buy this stuff and how to practice. I love the idea of risk-free because if you can practice risk-free, a guy's got nothing to lose, and then he or she, we can say, well, do I like this or do I not? The second thing is, is get yourself a stock. Start off with one that gives a dividend so you know when you're buying it um, it'll eventually pay for itself. And then third, if you can learn to use the options market to get paid, that return back comes faster. Let me say that again. My sons have a, a stronger and faster rate of return because not only are they getting dividends, but they're getting premiums from the option market. That supplements that dividend to the point where your return on investment is accelerated significantly. And here's the kicker. Think about risk. If my son buys a stock at $40 and the company goes bankrupt, he's just lost $40. But if my son gets paid $1.50 to buy that stock at $40, now his risk is $38.50. In other words, getting paid to buy your stock has less risk than if you just went out and bought it on your own because your cost basis is lower. That so there's actually cool. less, less risk in doing this. And here's what's crazy. If that stock goes up, my son keeps the money. If that stock goes sideways, then my son keeps the money. If that stock goes down, my son keeps that money, and he gets to buy at a discount. What's not to like about that? So there's a, there's a whole world of education that 401k people and retirement people and people in the you know people that play the, the up and down game of price and play the trend game. Um, you know, I appreciate trends and, and Robert knows I enjoy some technical analysis, but I use that more for the options market because they expire than the stock market. You know, in the stock market, we like cash flow. So, Andy, uh, I want to add, you said three things, but I want to add one more thing that you said that I thought was really key and, and actually really resonated with me. You said the goal isn't to get the best stock. If if that's your goal, you're probably never going to take action. So a beginner investor would be stuck trying to get the yeah. best. Instead, you said, get a good one, something with good Warren fundamentals. Buffett. 
Warren Buffett once said, I probably misquote him, but I'll try to get close. He said, you know, it's better to get a wonderful business at a fair price than trying to get a fair business at a wonderful price. You know, it's okay to be fair. I love these words, affordable, value, and fair. Yeah. And if you can find something that you can afford, all right, make, you know, Robert always says, how can I afford it is his phrase. And that's creativity. And then number two is if it has value to customers, it's valuable, right? And then if the price is fair, I have no problem in being treated fairly. Uh, I don't have any problem in making fair exchange and paying an amount of money that's fair for, for what I'm going to own. I have no problem with that. That's beautiful. Yeah. I think, uh, rich or poor people, uh, I'm not poor. That's a lie. Uh, but most people think less educated. Less educated. You. I think they believe that the rich got rich by screwing other people. And so I think that's a really good point, especially using Warren Buffett, one of the, the richer people on the planet. Uh, we do have to wrap it up and I want to make sure people know that you do actually have a, a free webinar that teaches this exact thing, how to start your first cash flowing or buy your first cash flowing stock. And, and I don't want to, I don't want to forget to tell people that because that's a great webinar where you really dig into the education and it's I'll really valuable. Warning. That webinar is brutal. You know, what makes a great Academy is the student body. You know, I, I had a friend that went to Yale and he said, well, I didn't learn much at Yale in terms of, of uh, the professors were good and everything. He said, they only let the serious people in. So my webinars, I hope people can take them because they're kind of brutal. Because when people you know, are trying to get in my academy, they need to have the right temperament or I can't even teach them. So I'll just give you a warning if you do watch that. It's, <laughs> I'm not mean. I just have standards that people have to follow. <laughs> Most like Robert says, there's no such thing as a good or bad investment. There's just good and bad investors. I so, agree. And th thank you for being on the show again. Like. Always fun. learn. Like you're one of my best friends. I talk to you all the time and I still learn something every time we do a show. So thank you so much. Thank you, Greg. All right. We'll see you next week. This podcast is a presentation of Rich Dad Media Network.